This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, we talk with the superintendent of the Hazelton Area School District to find out what goes into making the decision for weather-related delays or cancellations of school. Good evening and thanks for joining us at FYI. I'm Ken Kerr. We begin with headlines from FYI News 13 and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, a special prosecutor and grand jury have recommended Pennsylvania Attorney General Kathleen Kane be charged criminally. In the post on philly.com, the article states the group believes Kane leaked information to a newspaper and violated grand jury laws in doing so. One local school was evacuated today after smoke started coming out of a heating vent. According to our media partner, The Standard Speaker, debris got into a vent in the metal shop at North Schuylkill Junior Senior High School, causing the problem. There was no fire when emergency crews arrived, and there was only a little bit of damage to the unit. No injuries were reported. Single-digit temperatures this morning triggered many school districts to implement a two-hour delay. However, that was not the case for the Hazelton Area School District, a decision that sparked some concern and criticism on social media. FYI talked with the Hazelton Area School District Superintendent, Dr. Francis X. Antonelli, about that decision. I begin at 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I consult with three weather services, National Weather Service, uh, AccuWeather, and the Weather Channel. Uh, to determine uh, the forecast and the viability of uh, having school last scheduled or the possibility of a delay or a cancellation. We also, if I may add, uh, do confer with PennDOT uh, so that we get a read on current road conditions. Uh, we also have our own men out on the road driving the roads throughout the entire district to determine the conditions of the road. Uh, we're in touch with our custodial people to make sure that we have heat in the buildings and also our transportation uh, contractors to make sure that the buses are up and running. Another factor that enters into the process is the size of the school district. The district does encompass 250 square miles into three contiguous counties. The valley uh, could be experiencing warmer temperatures, no icing, no precipitation. We get into higher elevations such as Freeland and McAdoo, temperatures a few degrees lower, and there could be icing and precipitation issues in those areas. So that does present a very unique challenge in, in a large district such as Hazleton areas. Um, so what, what went into the decision? I know last year there were a few instances where you were closed or not necessarily closed, but there was a delay for, you know, extreme cold. So what, was it just based on it really wasn't going to warm up much today? It was that? That's correct. Again, the three weather services that we consult uh, indicated that there would be no significant increase in temperature two hours later in the morning. Dr. Francis X. Antonelli is the superintendent of the Hazelton Area School District. In other news, a Hazelton man is in the Luzerne County Prison after police say he argued and point, argued with and pointed a gun at a police officer. It was a pellet gun, and it all happened because of a parking ticket, according to police. 27-year-old Ariel Ailha Tenio Nunez of North Vine Street was arguing with a Hazelton police officer around 3 p.m. Wednesday over a parking ticket. Police say that Nunez drew and pointed the weapon at the officer. The officer then drew his handgun and ordered Nunez to the ground. According to police, Nunez dropped the weapon but continued to resist. He was taken into custody and transported to City Hall. Upon a search, police found him to be in possession of a narcotic. While at City Hall, Nunez damaged a wall in a holding cell as well. He was charged with terroristic threats, simple assault, resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, possession of a controlled su substance, and institutional vandalism. He was arraigned and committed in lieu of $40,000 straight bail. There were no injuries reported. Hazelton police report that 26-year-old Jeffrey George of East Tamarack Street was arrested and charged after he allegedly stabbed two people on Wednesday night. Police were called to Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazelton just before 7 p.m. last night to investigate a report of two males being treated for stab wounds in the emergency room. Police determined that the stabbing incident occurred outside of 33 East Tamarack Street. Police allege that George stabbed 23-year-old Alberto Castro of Hazelton and a 17-year-old male juvenile. Castro sustained lacerations 
lacerations to his head and was treated at the hospital, then transferred to a trauma center for further treatment. The juvenile sustained lacerations to his upper body and was treated at the local hospital. George was taken into custody without incident and charged with aggravated assault, simple assault, and recklessly endangering another person. Finally, a drums man faces a fine and a payment of restitution after pleading guilty to one summary count of cruelty to animals. Edward Balliot Jr. made the plea after the death of a malnourished horse under his care that was being kept on Deep Hole Road in Butler Township. The Luzerne County Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals filed a citation in December for neglect of a horse. Well, after the break, we'll talk about an upcoming musical production taking place in our area. And in sports, we have Hazleton Area Girls basketball highlights and Cougar wrestling highlights. This is FYI News 13. Brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. All right, so who out there knows what Second Fridays are? We are holding our first Second Friday here in downtown Hazleton in a brand new year, 2015. And spearheading that event is Krista Schneider. She's back with us here on FYI. Each and every Thursday, we talk about downtown businesses in the greater Hazleton area. So, Krista, thanks for being with us, and Happy New Year to you. Thanks. Happy New Year. All right. So, what is Second Friday? Well, Second Friday is a way for uh, downtown businesses and organizations to come together and coordinate promotions, events, to get everybody downtown on the same day, create mm -hmm. some vibrancy, and some excitement. All right, and how has that been going? So far, so good. Um, in fact, December was probably the mm -hmm. one of the best months that we had um, because we had so many children's programs for you know the holiday. We had uh, the chamber sponsored horse-drawn carriage rides, which, mm -hmm. which everybody seemed to really enjoy. So every month we add a little bit something different. Yes, I heard a lot of great things about December. So January we have a lot going on, and you know more and more businesses are participating as well. Yeah, in fact, um, it's a good time to say any business in the downtown that would want to participate participate in some way um, to give us a call at the uh, Downtown Hazleton Alliance uh, or at the Chamber and uh, let us know and we'll, we'll try to work you in and uh, or work them in and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and get it on the schedule. Okay, so what is going on tomorrow? Uh, so the first or the second Friday mm -hmm. of January we have um, some, uh, we have opening night of the Pennsylvania Theater for, for Performing Arts okay. uh, show. It's 42nd Street. Um, so that's our opening night, so that's pretty exciting. That starts at 7 p.m. The uh, YMCA is also hosting a uh, new pr program. It's a boxing program, uh, Skills and Drills for Adults. Okay. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, the uh, Teen Center is open that evening, and uh, the library is doing a story time for kids starting at 4 p.m., but people have to pre-register for that. Okay. What else do we have? I know that uh, we have Core Fitness coming down for a little yeah. Glow Zumba. Well, actually, that's at their uh, fitness center. They okay. have, uh, uh, at 6 p.m., they're doing a, a Glow Zumba party. Yeah. So that's free. Walk-ins are welcome. Any woman that wants to come in, they just wear white or neon colors, and they glow in the dark, and it's, it's kind of neat. All right. <laughs> so. What time does all of this happen, and how can they get the list of all the activities? Well, they can get the list of activities from our website, downtownhazleton.org. It's right on our homepage. Um, but the... Uh, the other thing is that there's a, a bunch of different restaurants that are mm -hmm. offering uh, discounts, uh, specials for, for dinner that evening. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, several different merchants that are, um, you know, providing discounts and jewelry like mm -hmm. Chaskin's and, and Felon's has a special promotion going mm -hmm. on. Carmen's is offering free mm -hmm. pastries, you know, for, for lunch. And so there's just a lot going on. And if, the, yeah, they just go on our website, they can look at the... Um, uh, at the flyer, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a map associated with it. Good, so they don't necessarily have to be outside to enjoy Second Friday. There's no. a lot going on inside this time. And, and during the day. It's not just at night. It's mm -hmm. all during the day as well with some of the, the promotions for the businesses. Um, yeah, so they could wear their coat, bundle up, <laughs> and right. go inside. All right, well, um, SSP TV, you know, we're uh, downtown too. We're offering our special. So even if you think, oh, maybe I don't have anything to offer, you still can. You know, you don't have to be a restaurant to participate. That's right. That's right. And uh, throughout this new year, um, we're looking to start theming each month okay. um, with different uh, 
different special events and programs. And so uh, hopefully, you know, we could find more businesses to participate that way. Neat. Okay, so come to downtown Hazleton Friday. It's the second Friday event. All of the activities are on the website. Krista, thanks right. for joining us here. And join us every Friday, excuse me, every Thursday here on FYI when we speak with downtown business owners. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. It was another cold day. I shot video outside today. I was worried the tripod was going to fuse to my hand and I was going to have to join the X-Men. Let's check out the extended forecast, our forecast now from the National Weather Service. For tonight, light snow is likely mainly after 4 a.m. with a low around 8. With a wind chill, it will feel like negative 7. New snow accumulation of less than a half inch is possible. Now to the extended forecast on Friday. Snow showers are likely before noon. It'll be a mostly cloudy day with a high near 22, but once again with the wind chill, we'll feel like negative eight new snow accumulation of less once again than a half inch possible Friday night partly cloudy our low will be four wind chill value negative 12 Saturday the sun comes out we'll have a high near 14 another windy day Saturday night a low of eight on Sunday partly sunny as we get up near 30 degrees Sunday night it's like a heat wave we get a low of 24 Monday there's a chance of snow showers a high of 29 and then Monday night another chance of snow showers the low will be 24 degrees and our forecast is brought to you by the Pines Eatery and Spirits, located right here in downtown Hazleton, where you can enjoy the sounds of Double Shot Duo performing tomorrow from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., plus happy hour, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., and their regular menu is available as well. So enjoy that at the Pines tomorrow. Well, if you're looking to see a wonderful Broadway show without making a trip to New York, then we have the ticket. Our Lisa Sugar gets the details on a major musical production opening in our area tomorrow evening. This weekend, you are invited to go to 42nd Street. Now, I'm not talking about New York. I'm talking about Hazleton, PA. The show, 42nd Street, will be taking to the stage at the Pennsylvania Theater of Performing Arts, the PTPA, in the J.J. Ferrara Center in downtown Hazleton. And here to tell us about this wonderful musical show is Samantha Sugart, who is the choreographer. And uh, to uh, clear the waves here, yes, she's my daughter. <laughs> So uh, we're going to, you know, tell all the truth here, not hide. Mike Marone is the director of 42nd Street. Mike, this is not the first time that 42nd Street has been performed by the PTA, but I heard this is supposed to be the best performance of it ever. Uh, well, you know, I wouldn't necessarily go that far, but uh, yeah, PTPA uh, did uh, do this show 12 seasons ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long, um, considering I was involved with that production as well. So I guess that dates me a little bit, but um, it is a wonderful show. It's the quintessential backstage musical. Um, so it allows audiences to get a little insight on what uh, the backstage life of an actor and a producer uh, really is like, which is kind of fun. And it's got great songs, a lot of uh, them, which a lot of people know, such as Lullaby of Broadway and We're in the Money. So um, it's great when people get to see a show that they have uh, songs that they're familiar with as well. Absolutely, and some of the songs that I love to uh, hear. And of course, because there's a lot of famous songs in it, there's a lot of dancing in it as well. Enter the choreographer, Samantha. And uh, this, was, this is a challenge because this is a dance-heavy show. Absolutely. Uh, there's uh, overabundance of tap numbers especially, and tap luckily is one of my favorites. So it was definitely easier for me to choreograph. Um, I consider this like an all-star Northeastern Pennsylvania cast. We have people from the Wilkes-Barre area and from Mountaintop and Hazleton, and everybody came together to, you know, bring me their tap talent. So it was great. It made my job a whole heck of a lot easier, and uh, we had a really great time working on it. How long does it take to get everybody in sync to get these numbers performed? About four hours, no. <laughs> um, we, we've been rehearsing for about three to four weeks now. Um, it's a shorter rehearsal period, but we like to use a lot of the college students who are home on their break, give them something to do. So we try to fit it all into a short rehearsal period for them. All right. Now, Mike, everybody's wondering, when do I go? When are the times available and the dates and everything like that? Well, uh, performances start on the 9th of January. And um, that is tomorrow <laughs> um, and run for two weeks. Uh, performances are Friday and Saturdays at seven and Sundays at three o'clock. Okay, so if you can't get there this weekend, you can get there next weekend as well. Absolutely, we run through the 18th. All right, so if anybody's interested in tickets, can they get them in advance? How do they get them? Oh, uh, you know, the best way to do it is by calling our box office, which is 570-454-5451. Uh, 
and they also have a website, which I know is ptpashows.org, correct? You got it. All right, I'm, a, I'm an old hat at this too as well. So this is going to be a great performance. Uh, we want a lot of people to come out. And uh, what does it mean to have the audience filled when you're putting on a major production like this that took so much time and effort? The cast can feel the energy coming from the audience. They, it, it becomes an interactive experience for both sides. So uh, the bigger, better, more you know, responsive the audience is, that's going to help the show that much more. All righty. Well, we wish you break a leg. I was going to say good luck, but I can't say that. Wish you to break a leg. Uh, 42nd Street, the curtain goes up tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the PTPA in downtown Hazleton. Call or go online to get your tickets today. Thank you, Lisa. Here's the green screen, your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers. The daily number, 206. The big four, 3788. Quinto, 17067. And Treasure Hunt, 4, 5, 16, 18, 19. We'll try to find out what's fueling the Lady Cougars' early season basketball run. Stay tuned next. This is FYI News 13 Sports. There's something special going on right now with the Hazleton area Lady Cougar basketball team. On Wednesday night, they continued their dominance on the court with a 61-26 win over rival Crestwood, and the Lady Comets just challenged a really good Pittston team. The 8-1 Lady Cougars are jumping on teams early and giving them little hope to come back. You can call their run right now magical, but they would probably go with the word teamy. Mackenzie Yuri had 15 points for the Lady Cougars in this game. That's an impressive stat, and so is this. In her two and a half minute post game interview, she used the word together six times. In the first quarter, we came out really strong. We played hard defense, we played together. That was the most important part. We played together, we're unstoppable. So that's really how we got going. The Lady Cougars outscored Crestwood 23 to three in the first quarter. Five different players scored in that quarter for the Big HA, and nine of the 11 players on their roster contributed points in the game. The Lady Cougars are more together right now than a group of scouts singing Kumbaya around a campfire. Our kids are fired up and we're playing very well. We're playing very well. Everybody's shooting the ball and uh, taking it to a, level, a new level. Our bigs are really starting to come now. Lexi Walk is playing possessed. She's just playing the last couple games. She had 18. She's just She's just playing good, and B is solid as heck, and all of our guards can shoot, our subs can shoot, we're running things, we're very teamy. I don't think teamy is a word, but it perfectly describes the Lady Cougars right now. Yori even used it when I asked her what she was working on personally during the offseason. I worked on just getting stronger and attacking more, and just, I mean, always playing with my team, you know what I mean? Being teamy and just going hard and dishing off if I have to, or taking it hard myself, it's just getting tougher, that's all. It was Yori's job to defend the Comets' talented Maddie Ritzik. Ritzik is an all-state player. She's six foot. She plays everybody's toughest person. They put her on Mac. I said, Mac, don't get crazy. You know what's going to happen. Don't get crazy. She didn't get crazy. Played within herself when she had it. She took it. Had a couple big things. Dished off real good. And everybody picked up the slack. Hey, listen, that's a good game. That's a good all-around game. And she's just maturing. She took the... Like, what a jump she took. And she was good last year. Make no mistake. She was good last year. Now she's leading. She's, she's controlling it from the point. She's scoring. She's dishing. No offense here. Mac wasn't a great presser last year. Stitchy was the presser. And she was the, listen, now she's becoming that. She wants it. I take it off. She said, what are you doing? Uh, that means you're believing it and she's reading and she's telling people to do it. Your point guard is your captain out there and she's just doing a great job. All right, let's check out some wrestling highlights from Maple Manor Elementary School where Tunkanic beat Hazleton Area High School. Things started off well enough for the Hazleton Area Cougars. Jacob Maurer got a pin at 106 pounds. Chris Lisecki kept things going for the Big HA at 113 pounds as he got a pin, and Hazleton Area had a 12-0 lead fast. Tunkanic got three points back at 120 pounds as Jake Richards got a 10-4 decision, but Hazleton Area answered right back at 126 pounds where Jimmy Hoffman posted a major decision victory, but then Tunkanic started to gain momentum. Bill Manley won a decision at 138, and Mike Manley got a fall at 152 pounds, and that gave his team the lead for good as Tunkanic got the Wyoming Valley Conference win over Hazleton area. 
Now, before we move on, let me translate a little bit. When Hazleton area head coach Joe Gavio was talking about his player B, I believe that was Michaela Browdy. And when he was talking about Stitchy, that was Alyssa Sitch, who graduated last year for the Lady Cougars. Now, let's go to the FYI standard speaker scoreboard. In wrestling, North Schuylkill is now 2-0 and in the Schuylkill League. They continue to be hot. They took down Tamaqua. Monoy area, they're also 2-0 and in the league after their win over Upper Dauphin. Back to the hardwood where the Marion girls, they beat rival Nativity. Marion girls dealing with a lot of injuries this year, but they just keep winning as they get this big win in the Schuylkill League. Now also in the Schuylkill League, Shenandoah Valley beat Schuylkill Haven. The Marion boys, they posted a win. They got it on the road against Pius X. Now finally in bowling, Hazleton area, the girls lost to Governor Mifflin. According to the standard speaker, that was their first loss in the past two years. The boys, they picked up a win over Governor Mifflin. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news first. Tonight, happy birthday to Kristen Marques. Love from your family, friends, and everyone at SSP TV. And our Talk of the Town report, professional wrestling will be held Sunday, January 25th at 5 p.m. at the Sanctuary, located on Wyoming Street in Hazleton. The venue will be presenting the Sanctuary Stampede, a 30-man rumble with the last one standing in the ring being awarded the championship. Tickets are available at the door. For info, call 570-262-0636 or facebook.com slash sanctuary PA. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. Thursday is $1 burger night at Bottlenecks. Get a juicy fourth pound burger for only $1 all night long. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Norman T. Ward of Barnesville, Memorial is Sunday at 4 p.m. in the Christ Lutheran Church in Rush Township. Friends may call from 3 to 4 p.m. The Lamar Christ Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Elizabeth M. Rabaski of Kingston. Mass is Friday at 9.30 a.m. at the St. Ignatius of Loyola Church. No calling hours are scheduled. Arrangements are by the Corcoran Funeral Home. Ralph F. Motzuk of McAdoo. Services were held today and under the direction of the John J. Pustai Funeral Home. Donald J. Walton of Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 10 a.m. at the St. Joseph's Church. Friends may call at the church from 8.30 to 10 a.m. Arrangements are under the direction of the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Victoria A. Harmon, formerly of Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 11 a.m. in the Most Precious Blood Church. The Firo Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And John T. Stefanik of Freeland. Memorial is Saturday at 9.30 a.m. in the Immaculate Conception Parish at St. Anne's Church. Friends may call from 9 to 9.30 a.m. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Eileen Lambert of Drums. Eileen, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-455-7267, extension 104. A lot of our headlines that we read today were posted on standardspeaker.com as breaking news. Make sure you go there and sign up for text alerts so you can be informed when news happens. You can also go to facebook.com slash FYI News 13. Well, hey, we are this close to bringing you an all new out of left field here at SSP TV. Check out our Facebook page to find out when that will air. That's it for tonight. See you tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone.